right, so so are we ready? We're ready yeah, we're good to go. I think. <clears throat> hey, how you guys doing today? Hey, welcome. We're doing a podcast episode. Yay! <laughs> we're the Ungodly Geeks. I'm Luke. I'm Joe. And today we are talking about Star Wars and Disney stuff because, you know, the Disney's D23 Expo. <laughs> Disney's We Don't Like Your Cons, so we're going to start our own cons. Yeah. <laughs> Expo um, happened. And, you know, there are, there are, of course, things that were announced that were kind of cool. Uh, you know, like Lizzie McGuire, she's coming back. Yay. Dude, Lady in the Tramp live action, quote unquote, live action. Oh, Fuck man. Fuck yeah. Got to see the, the, the puppers in digital rendition. I, I You know, I think that um, when it comes to marketing spiel like that, that um, companies should be absolutely forbidden from calling CGI Fest movies live action. Like The Lion King. It, that was not live action. not live action. There's nothing CGI. live action about that, right? <laughs> it's really good looking CGI. It's amazing Still looking CGI. CGI, but there's not actual lions on that screen doing things, right? No. <clears throat> so please fuck off with live action. No, it's it's CGI. Yeah. It's, it's still animated. It's just animated in a different way. If Lady and the Tramp has the people in it, then it can be called live action. Right. the original Lady and the Tramp did. It did, yeah. It did have so, people in it. Okay, so fits. we're not actually talking about no, that stuff. Care. The Lady and the Tramp is literally the only thing other than the, the the Star Wars and the Marvel stuff that I know they announced. Like, I have no idea if they announced anything else. Apparently, Lizzie McGuire is something they announced. It's coming back. I don't fucking care. I mean, you know, oh, the- Home Alone. Is, maybe they talk more about the Home Alone being a reboot on Disney+. Plus. I don't know. I mean, okay. Yeah, there's... I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know that you can recapture the charm of the first couple movies. No. I know the third and fourth movie. I didn't give a shit about the first two, especially Home Alone two, are still some of the best movies. They still hold up so well. The first movie, I honestly, it works because of the time period it's set in. Yeah. What are you going to do now? That's not going to be the kid taking five seconds to call the police and say, "Hey, there's two really creepy guys trying to get into my house." Right. Like, the movie ends. The cops <clears> show it. up. Five minutes later, 30 cops show up, arrest the fucking people. Like, it's, come on. It's, it's over. It's the movie, just... the movie's over in 12 minutes, and I say 12 minutes because you got to have your opening yeah. card. you got to have the five minutes where the kid's waiting for the movie, and then you got to have the ending credits. That's the most difficult part of any horror movie in this day and age, if it's set now, or anything in general, is, okay, but... What about cell phones? Yeah. Like, Everyone has one. We're in the age where people have these microcomputers in their fucking yeah. pockets that can do anything. You know? Like, yeah. If you're doing a monster movie, it's why everything has to be set. Like, okay, why can't they just take a picture of it? Why can't they just call the fucking police? And why? Yeah. Like, like oh, well, no one believes them or whatever. My phone can record 40, 4K 60 frame per second video. <laughs> yeah. And I have 128 gigabytes of storage. I can get several, like, I can get like an hour or two of footage of this fucking thing. What do you mean that you, why aren't you doing this, you fucking morons? Yeah. You know. That's why anything does that. You know, if you're doing like a monster movie, you have to have it set out where there's no cell phone signal. Yeah. That's why it's, that's why Cabin in the Woods. Yeah. Boom. Um, (laughs) so... You ain't gonna get no signal out here. <laughs> Before we do uh, dive too deep into any of that, we're gonna do some news of stupid. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Because you know we always try to. Uh, There's always something dumb going on. There was a Catholic breach who allegedly spent thousands of church money on Grinder. So, <laughs> on the one hand, you know you're being a hypocrite because the church and gay f- gay folk have never gotten along. But on the other hand, at least he's not doing it to young boys. Yeah. Right, because you think Catholic priests, like Luke said in our uh, before we started the, con- the content video, um, <clears throat> if it's a bad Catholic, story, you yeah, hear Catholic bad story, and you, you hear, hear Catholic, Catholic priest, you hear it's a bad thing. You hear about you, like, oh God, what happened now? There's an altar boy getting yeah. butt fucked. So, um, but no, it, it's okay, it's fine. Um, a Catholic priest in Downington, Pennsylvania, because of course it's going to be fucking Pennsylvania. It's like Kentucky, but with snow. <laughs> um, allegedly stole almost a hundred grand in church donations between 2011 and 2018. So, like this dude was doing it for seven years and stole a hundred grand from his church. Wait, how do you spend it on Grinder? Um, 
All right, so he apparently spent that money on boyfriends he met on the app oh, Grinder. So he didn't spend it on Grinder itself. That's what I was going to say. Like- yeah, no. Um, he claimed that McLoon used JPay, which, if those who don't know, is a service ran by some banks mm-hmm. that allows you to send money to uh, pe- you know guys in jail, people in jail, and the fees associated with it are fucking exorbitant. Yeah, of course, of course they are. Right, it's the only way to work. They exploit people in prison. Um, so apparently, the McLoon, Father Joseph McLoon, which why does he got to have that first name? Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing <laughs> Joseph these McLoon. Fucking, I'm not doing these fucking things, right? Um, I could not have a more Catholic sounding name. I just want to. That's that true. Out there. Yeah, no, you absolutely can't. Um, Use JPay to send twelve hundred dollars to an inmate in a New York prison and one thousand seven hundred twenty dollars to men he met through the app. Oh. Jesus. <laughs> So you have you lead this church and you have your parishioners donating money to your church, and instead of using it like you should do for church things, you're using it to like dote on dudes you've met on Grinder and send money to people. And they were wondering why their church didn't have enough gold bullshit around it. (laughs) It's like it's 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 just amazing, you know. Like why why do we gotta have this kind of shit? I'm just fucking. Um, continuing on the whole fucked up situation here, uh, there was a Japanese anti-groping device that sells out within 30 minutes. Um, for those who don't know, in Japan, being groped, if you're a woman, being groped on the train or in like train stations is a very much a thing you have to worry about. And when I say it's very much a thing you have to worry about, it's like school shootings in, in, in America. It's something you have to, oh my God, that might happen. Or, oh my God, it has happened. Oh my God, it's going to happen. So it's like, yeah, it, it's kind of a big deal. And so there was a Japanese stamp maker who um, sat there, created this device where you, if you get groped, you stamp this dude's hand and it has a little UV light built into it and it's invisible ink so you can identify gropers. Oh, okay. So it's like it, it's like groping tracking system. Right? I was honest to God when you said an anti-grope device, because that's not anti. That's we'll catch you after the fact. Yeah. I was thinking, because I saw a picture of somebody wearing a, like, imagine any 90s post, like, futuristic movie yeah. where someone was wearing this spiked uh, shirt over their regular shirt that just was covered in spikes. I'm thinking, like, oh, okay, so that was a real thing. <laughs> That's an anti-groping device. This this is just a, I hope he doesn't watch this mark off later device. Well, it means it's made with invisible ink, and we all know ink's not easy to get off your skin. No, that's so, true. And if you don't even know it's there, you're not even going to attempt to wash it off. Of course, at any point, someone could say, well, she just started stamping. She just stamped right. a random person. In right, there. but that that gets into shaky territory. Sure. Um, I, um, I'm but, just but, saying, but like, it's here's not- the thing. In 2017, the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department recorded 1,750 cases of groping or molestation. Jesus. And that's only the ones that were reported. That was only the ones that were reported. And that was just in 2017. Mm -hmm. And over half of those occurred on a train. Yeah. With another 20% in in the stations. Jesus Um, fucking Christ. According to a recent Nikkei survey of 1,000 working women, 43% 43% had experienced sexual harassment and 60% did not uh, said they did not report it. Mm-hmm. Because it's scary too. Yeah. It's very much scary too. Like and like we said it is that common in Japan that it's only in the last few years where they've even been treating it like it's something, something that they shouldn't should happen. Yeah, like like in, especially in the workplace. And I bet in those numbers and the reporting numbers are even like more uh, Oh different. yeah, yeah, like if a thousand women say they uh, uh, a thousand women said this happened to them on the train 60, on the train or well period yeah and 60 percent of those said they did not report it and that's just a thousand people yeah you know like like how much worse is this like you know apparently it's bad enough that uh, something that cost 19 euro uh sold out within half an hour mm-hmm. you know, like so that's that's really fucked up uh so if anybody's listening in japan uh, don't grope women. And I say this especially to Japan since it's actually a problem. It should be a common sense thing to not just grope random strangers, period. That's strange because Japan's but, considered like one of the like safest places to be in the, yeah, the whole fucking world. You know, guns are banned, weapons are banned, drugs are banned. It's just 
Uh, I mean, e- even even more so than that, like just, you know, you pass out drunk on the side of the road. You're going to wake up with usually with your wallet and everything on you. And yeah. like, you know, somebody might help you out or at, at the very least, nobody's going to bother you. Well, what I've taken away from this story, you're probably going to get groped. You might have. Yeah, you yeah. might have your jiggly bits <laughs> touched a little bit. You might have your special spots played with because um, apparently that's a fucking problem and that needs to not be a problem. So uh, if you're a listener in Japan, don't fucking do that. <laughs> if you're a listener anywhere else, don't fucking do that. Don't be a dick. You know, that that should be like, that should be one of those things we learn growing up, but apparently some people missed that fucking lesson. Yeah. Um, so here's some, some dumb shit. Uh, a guy in East Ridge, Tennessee, sues Popeyes over the sold-out chicken sandwich. <laughs> because he can't get happy. Um, he's apparently suing them for false advertising, which that's not how this works. Because they didn't have any chicken sandwiches Because they sold out. Like, oh my God, they sold out. Um, all right, so let me give a physics lesson. Every single thing in the universe has a finite amount, right? There is no unlimited amount of anything, except for maybe space. And stupid. And stupid, you're right. <laughs> um, so no one person can have an unlimited supply of anything. That's, that's not how reality works. So you can't expect to go to a place to get a second sandwich and it always be in stock. Sometimes shit just happens. Sometimes things run out. We're living. This is how reality works. We're living a Boondocks episode right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> like somebody posted. One of my friends posted a clip from an episode where like this woman's. They, I, I don't remember. It's KFC type restaurant. Apparently they had a new new recipe of chicken. Everybody wanted it. They're selling out everywhere. And there's some one lady who they were interviewing on like the news, and she's like, "What am I gonna do?" I don't have any chicken. I need chicken for my family. We're going to starve. Like, get something fucking else. Go get something else. He's like, how could they run out of chicken? By like, selling it, it all. It fucking happens. This, it's supply and demand. And there's a whole fucking demand, a lot of demand. And there's not enough supply. So, yeah. when yeah, So, what Luke just said is very important. When the demand <laughs> is bigger than the supply, shit runs out. It just happens. Um, the funny thing is, he, he, he's... He he goes on to describe um, emotional is it emotional his alleged hardships, uh, countless time ways fucking... to drive him to and from Popeyes. Uh, he was here's here's the part I love the most. Yeah. He was hustled by somebody on Craigslist. Um, apparently, <laughs> he responded to an ad from on Craigslist from someone claiming to know an employee who could hide away sandwiches for those willing to pay extra. Right, so he paid this dude twenty four dollars and never got his sandwich, motherfucker. That's your fault. Yeah, no, that that's, that's your fault for being a fucking I idiot. I hope Popeyes takes this to court and fucking ruins this guy. Um, Barr added in the complaint that he damaged his tire and rim while trying to track down the elusive <laughs> sandwich and suffered emotional damage after being humiliated by his friends. Once again, your fucking fault. Oh my god, good. Don't be an Kill idiot. Kill yourself. Kill yourself. Don't. I be hope an- you haven't reproduced. Kill yourself. Don't be an idiot when driving the fuck around. And if your friends are that kind of assholes, tell them the fuck off. No, they're they're the fucking only reasonable people. This guy's the asshole. Yeah, like he needs to fuck off into traffic. Oh my goodness, this is this is just amazing. That's that story just fucking got worse and worse. Like, no, you don't. Oh my god, I hope Popeyes fucking fights it in court and is like, yeah. We're countersuing for, you know, court costs oh and damages to our reputation for this fucking moron even speaking our name. The paper reports that Barr owns a company in the automobile industry and believes that Popeye should be held to account for not meeting the hype they helped create. What are you fucking talking about? What? what? The, the hype what? that they got lucky enough the internet created for them? You mean? You fuck it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I hate it. I hate it's it totally so deceptive. Who runs out of chicken? It's a big fiasco. Motherfucker, people run out of chicken. Has he never gone to Taco Bell at 11 o'clock at night when they're like, yeah, we're out of meat? <laughs> We've run out of taco shells. Yeah. We've run out of fucking uh, the shells uh, and nachos. We run out of everything. We don't want to make food go away. <laughs> like, I get where he's coming from, right? Because what kind of chicken place runs out of the only thing they sell? For the most, yeah. All right. No, I get it. I get Regular like, day? I get sure. that. But you realize this is a hype they did not help create. 
No. They did not do a damn thing. They advertised, but they didn't. This this is most like ninety percent of this is internet hype. It was just viral marketing that was free yeah. for them. Like they didn't fucking do this, you moron. Bar is asking for five thousand in damages. Jesus fucking, just fucking. And wow. here I half expected him to be suing for a number of sandwiches. <laughs> He just wants a sandwich. If he sued for a sandwich, I'd be like, all right. I'm in this guy's corner. I am in this dude's corner. Right now, with this shit, with what I've read here, no, fuck yourself. Fuck yourself. What is your name? Uh, Craig Barr of East Ridge, Tennessee. Fuck you. Idiot. Fuck you, you asshole. Fucking idiot. I'll be honest. I was driving um, somewhere yesterday or the other day to, to get something for lunch. Yeah. And I looked and was like, hey. Kind of want to try that Popeye's chicken sandwich. Look, oh, there's cars lined around the building. I'll go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. That's it. Easy as that. It's simple. Look, nope, going somewhere else. But Luke, Luke, and so his so friends so humiliated him. They made fun of him. They caught him. They made fun because he didn't get his chicken sandwich. Like it's like it's like the kids who make fun of the welfare kid for not being able to buy ice cream growing up <laughs> or like the Eddie Murphy joke where he wants McDonald's and his mom goes home and makes him a fucking giant burger with like the green pepper and stuff inside and it's just this big hulking thing and the kids are making fun of him because they've got their McDonald's and he's got that gi- giant welfare burger and they <laughs> called it the welfare burger <laughs> the welfare burger <laughs> oh um, somebody who called it we didn't even get cookies we got cookie Chris, I think it was Chris Rock. It's like, you didn't get a bag of cookies. You got cookie. <laughs> you just break off a chunk and eat it. Uh, it's, it's like the equivalent of the kids who uh, are fucking mocking the kid who doesn't has the default skin in Fortnite. Right, yeah. Like, hey, you didn't get the chicken sandwich. Would you go Chick-fil-A? <laughs> ah, fucking lose. Like, no. What were his friends making fun of him for? Probably because the dumbass was crying to them about the fact that he couldn't get a fucking chicken sandwich. And they went... What the fuck is your problem? <laughs> that would be me. That would that would totally be us. Like, why are you so obsessed with this? Get the like, fuck out right. of here. Fuck. All right, so... Uh, I bet it ain't even that good. It's Popeyes. All right, the chicken is okay. Their sides all suck. It's not It's not that impressive. Yeah, but you're white. Your opinion doesn't count. I uh, guess, apparently. Um, I don't know. All right. I talk to other people, like, what's, 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 what's good about Popeyes? And I always pretty much get the same answer of, like, yeah, their, their shit's mediocre. Mm. And little, like, like we have, the there's a restaurant around here, and I think there's more than one called Richie's Chicken. Yeah, they're really good. They're lo- fucking amazing mm-hmm. compared to like the garbage that is Popeyes or KFC. Oh my god, just fucking blow them out of the water. It's like real macaroni and cheese. Real I wish, sides. Um, I wish that Richie's would make on you food slap your apps. mama. Richie's is on for at least for me. I get it through uh, DoorDash. Maybe I've just overlooked it. That's the only one. Actually, no, I remember now. The last time I went to order food from DoorDash, um, they were closed, even though I know that's a lie. Yeah, I think it depends on where their drivers are. It's like... Sometimes they... But, like, the thing that gets me, because Richie's is right up the road from me. You know yeah. where it is. Um, yeah, I was going to say, like, wait I could a walk there, closer than I am. I could walk there in 15 minutes. Yeah. So, the Little Caesars, right around the corner, it's like mm-hmm. literally a two-minute walk away from this Richie's location. Uh-huh. That's open for delivery on DoorDash. Interesting. But Richie's The Wendy's it? across the street is open for delivery on DoorDash. But Richie's is closed? I wonder if it's just they shut their system down. I don't know. Because I, 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 I don't even know how that goes through. I mean, DoorDash receives it, and depending on whether the restaurant has like an online mm-hmm. portal... Either the online portal gets it gets submitted through the online, or someone literally walks in and places your order and then takes it to you. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, anyway, I get that. Either way, yeah. We, like we have, there's much much better chicken places out there. I mean, yeah. And I'm sure anybody who has a Popeyes near them has a better place for chicken. Yeah, absolutely. You always do. Like Hooks Fish and Chicken down the road here. Yeah. They're apparently fucking incredible too, and they're a local place. Yeah. So, all right. Support um, local businesses. Exactly, especially <laughs> black local businesses, right? Because they get shafted so much. Yeah. Um, the Sun. Well, okay, I don't care about that. ISIS fighter killed by a drone bomb. He was operating after it ran low on battery and flew back. I I, I absolutely love this. Um, <laughs> like, okay, not the terrorist part, obviously. None of that. I mean, That's, the fact that he died, I like that. that I love ISIS that. ISIS piece of shit. 
Um, Drone's like, Daddy, I am dying. I I, I just love it because he has he takes his drone, he customizes it to deliver a bomb. Duct tape. Um, <laughs> duct tape and dynamite. Duct tape and dynamite. But he's so fucking stupid that he forgot to charge it. <laughs> so it flies, flies back, back to him because that's what they do. That's what they're programmed to do. That. When their battery is low, they fly back to their point of origin. <laughs> and this dumb fucker. <laughs> that is that. That's great. I love it. Um, that's all. There's uh, nothing to this story. It's just some dickhead that blew himself up. It is a real um, thing Russians tried to do in World War Two. Maybe yeah. maybe during before whatever. Uh, they were decided that. They could strap a uh, anti tank mine to the back of a dog, and they trained the dogs to run at tanks, and they would run at tanks with these mines, and then detonate under the tank. Right. Um, unfortunately, when they did the training, because they didn't have access to German tanks, they did the training with Russian tanks. So when they released the dogs to go running at the tanks, they didn't run to the German tanks. They ran to the Russian tanks yeah. and destroyed their own fucking tanks. It's like when we tried to use bats to, yes, uh, to, to set fire to uh, homes in Tokyo. Yeah. And instead it burnt down the test of the facility where they were testing the bat bombs. Yeah. And then like went and burnt down a f- like a farm, like a, a couple barns or something. Yeah, too. It's, it's, just, it's kind of hilarious. All right. So I've got two more stories here, uh, but I don't want to cover them both. Um, I don't know. I think we've done enough news this stupid. Are, are they sure? good? Can, Which ones are they? Um, the Florida man defrauding Xerox and yeah. Trump bombing uh, if he got nuking caught, hurricanes. If he got caught and just, I don't care about that. That's that's just a cover-up of something that he probably got. That was probably a more important news story. But if the guy got caught defrauding him, I'm kind of like, that All sucks. Right. We're like, going gonna to go ahead and we're going we're, we're to cover this one because I don't want to talk about Trump. Um, Robert Fisher shut Sam. Shut, sh- <laughs> Robert Fisher sets up sham companies to defraud Xerox out of over $25 million in toner. Yeah. Um, basically, a uh, guy sat there and um, set up these things. And RBM Imaging, which was owned by Fisher, purchased the toner. He didn't represent it to Xerox, and he sold it to one of the sham companies. Instead of using the toner... The materials were sold for approximately about $11 million. The five men split the process. Under the Xerox business model, customers pay the company based on the number of prints made with its toner. Payments are not made up front. Mm-hmm. So basically, he, he used that contract to his advantage, saying, yeah, we totally sold it. Here's the thing. And then and then got money for mm-hmm. the sale. Yep. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm all for defrauding uh, Xerox because they've ruined the prices of ink for everyone. Right. Uh, with the monopoly they have with, between them and, like, the one other company that makes ink cartridges. It's just, it's just, I find it hilarious, though. $25 million in toner. What is that, like, six toner cartridges? Exactly. Like, like, he's like It's like a, a fucking week's worth. Like, fuck those guys. Yeah, um, fuck, fuck them. I'm, I wish that he had defrauded them and we wouldn't hear about it because he had just been making this money. The funny thing is, you know, he, 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 he frauds them out of over $25 million in toner. Yeah. And only have to pay $3.8 million in, retro, in restitution. Ah, okay. But, uh, and uh, $150,000 for the U.S., the IRS, of course, because they always have to get their yeah, cut. Yeah, so it still does, he still doesn't come out. <clears throat> like, it doesn't matter. Like, that's, that's the thing I love about the IRS is it doesn't matter what your income source is, whether it's you legit, gotta pay the IRS. Whether it's legit or not. Yep. They just want their share. Yep. <laughs> so, like, you, you're selling drugs. If you are selling drugs, but you're paying appropriate amount of taxes to the IRS, they are okay with you selling drugs. That doesn't mean you're not going to get a knock at the door by the FBI. Yeah, they will report you. But they want to make sure they get their money. They want to make, I mean, that's how they got Al Capone, right? Yep. They got him on tax fraud or tax, tax evasion. What, one of the two. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. They're both similar charges. But I find that just absolutely hilarious. Yeah. All right. So. Well, that's um, that's why they used to like say in my old neighborhood – uh, when we were talking about, you know, bigger drug dealers or people that had grow operations in their house. Right. Um, they had to make sure and be careful about what they bought. And they would, like, park Escalades and things like that down the street from, you know, their normal, like, medium, mid to uh, low to mid class house. And make sure, you know, inside where they had their big screen TVs and all their electronics and expensive shit. Um, their living room wouldn't have any of that. Mm-hmm. The front room, so that nobody would see it. Yeah, because they didn't want anyone to see. It'd be you know questioning how. Wait, how you working at 
fucking uh, you're a dishwasher and you're making you make enough money to have an Escalade and yeah, you know, yeah, fucking at the time like a 50 inch you know big screen TV whatever. Uh, in in my distant past, uh, I actually knew a drug dealer who drove a Toyota Tercel mm-hmm. from like 1994. Yeah, um, it had no back bumper. <laughs> Right, but this guy's making fucking bank. Oh, like the dude, like the dude lived in an unassuming little house down mm-hmm. in my old neighborhood. The house was worth probably twenty grand. In fact, the property the house sat on, if it were sold today, would be more worth more than the house. Yeah. Um, it had like five rooms in a basement, and if you walked into this house, the living, like you said, the front room is the living room is empty. The den is empty. Uh. The kitchen had a fridge and a stove, mm-hmm. and I think like an old turn turn knob microwave. So not even a modern digital microwave. But then you go down into the basement. That's where everything was. Yeah. Like they had a bedroom upstairs. Had a nice bed, a really nice bed. We're talking like three thousand dollar pillow top, downy yeah, bed, mattress. Yeah, yeah, like mat, amazing bed, mm-hmm. and like a dresser that was okay. Mm-hmm. But then you go downstairs, you go downstairs, there's a big screen TV, there's a mm-hmm. fucking, like, on one side, there's a big screen TV, on the other side, there's a projector against the wall mm-hmm. with surround sound and leather couches and shit. Oh, yeah. Um, like, I'm pretty sure the couch was worth more than the house at that point. Uh, it, it was incredible. Yeah, oh, yeah. But it, he, it, he never... You he gotta never, do what you gotta do. He never showed it off. That's, and that's one of those things that a lot of people make that mistake. You de- oh, never yeah. show that that's off. That's how you get caught. It's so by he, showing, yeah, he, he drove, showing the wealth. He drove that little thing. He made 150 grand a month easy. Drove a Toyota to sell. Mm-hmm. He could buy... Like, we could buy that car with our next paycheck yeah. type shit and still make rent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and that's what he drove. And everybody knew it, and nobody <laughs> said anything. No, because you don't fuck with that. You know, like, come on, dude. All right, so let's move on yeah. to our main topics for today, which you know, like we discussed at the beginning, Star Wars and Disney and Marvel yeah. stuff, which the is big, all uh, interesting to us. Disney had their uh, their conference. I, I mean, I don't know. I guess it is still a conference. I mean, they their call show. it an expo. Expo, right? Yeah. So it's an exposition. It's a showing off of. It's the ultimate Disney fan event. <laughs> Which I mean, I mean, it's, it's not even like it, it. Yeah, Disney, but it's fucking everything else. Like it's not Disney that I it's give a Marvel, shit about. And Star Wars. Yeah, and it's all the this things stuff. that Disney owns, <laughs> right? Like. I can't think of a single Disney movie these days, like actual Disney movie I'd care about. Um, Disney properties, nothing this these days I'd care about. If you go back like 20, 30 years, 40, mm-hmm. 50 years, looking at like old the old Mickey Mouse cartoons and stuff, which I know I've said before, that stuff I care about. But this shit, no, nah, I, don't, I don't care about most. Any modern Disney stuff, I don't give a shit about. No, because this, this focus on the quote-unquote live action, really just the digital movies they're doing now, I don't, I don't like it. I thought that I watched the Lion King um, and it's okay. It's the Lion King. It's been done. It's been done better because there's no emotion to anything. They look like lions. Guess what lions don't do? Smile or laugh or Or emote. Look sad. Emote at all. Unless, unless, I mean, the only way they do. It's kind of angry. Yeah. Angry, hungry, and horny. Yeah. That's all. And and they all are the same emotion. Yeah. The same face. They're all the same, you know, big, angry. Oh, Oh God. God, It's either going to eat me, fuck me, or kill me. And then eat me. And then then fuck me. me. (laughs) Right? Like, that's it. That's that's the three emotions lions are capable of conveying. Um, but yeah, you know, they, they had that. I, 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 I think the only live action and I do use that term so loosely, a movie I've cared about, they've come out with was, I think the jungle book. And that's because that, that was, one I, I liked that yeah. one actually ended up, that one was pretty good. That would, that was live action. There was a boy. There was a boy. And that's the thing is you could, that was your connection to the movie, was the boy. Yeah. The Lion King, there's not really any connection. Like with a scene where um, Simba and Nala go to the the Badlands or whatever and they meet the hyenas. Yeah. Um, while the, the voice acting, and they did more with the hyenas this, than in the animated movie, like Shenzi, the female hyena, whatever, she's like the boss. I didn't she's even know there much, was a much hyena. more. She, it was uh, Whoopi Goldberg back in the day. Um, okay, 
I saw that movie like 30 600. fucking times over one summer, and I do I not remember there being a female hyena. I mean, it was voiced by Whoopi Goldberg, I guess, like... They weren't exactly like promoting the genders, but it, it's it's the female. Hyena. It was the boss. She's the boss, uh, and in this movie, she's actually like a character. Which hey, that's kind of interesting. Except I still don't really care that much because I have no. I don't. I don't There's really nothing. care. Uh, the only thing I care about is oh my god, these lion cubs are kind of cute. I don't want to see them torn apart. But at the same time, if this was a nature documentary and they got torn apart, I'm still watching because it's a nature documentary. That, and also, that's how it goes. Is how it yeah. works. You know, that goes back to that thing where we're talking to the guys doing Popeyes. This is how it fucking works. This exactly. Is how, this is how reality like, is. Like Simba, uh, not Simba. Um, Mufasa shows up and starts fucking around, like, tossing hyenas around like crazy. That's cool. Yeah. Because that looks like a fucking nature documentary. And it did look that fucking good. Otherwise, what's the fucking point of these movies? They don't... Cash they're, grabs. They're, even Timon and Pumbaa. It sounds funny, but they don't... Like, it's not... It, the, there's no funniness faces. There's no emotion. I'll, just... I, I'll tell you how they could have made this movie amazing. Is if instead of using... The animal's face. They just put John. <laughs> oh Oliver. no! Please no, no! 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 They just put John Oliver's face on, on Zazu. The, on the Zazu, because he did. So it's John. Oh. <laughs> it's John Oliver. Whoa. Like that'd, be, that'd be like the cats. No, 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 no cats. not like the cats. Not like the cats. His actual, just his just, face. Just John Oliver's head on oh, top of the oh, little, yes. just, on just, the little bird body. Yes, it would have been. Per- you wouldn't have been able to tell the difference. <laughs> no, it would have been perfect. Yeah. His his character was so unbelievably perfect. Like they all, I mean, it, they were all good. I do, but like when I, it when was I like saw that, that is John. Ol- this yes, that is John Oliver. When if I he s- was in Africa, this would be John. Oliver. Exactly. See, that's why it works. <laughs> Just take a parrot's body, put John Oliver's head on, it, and let him let the He's, movie go. He is the perfect and yes man. That is the only change you make. Don't make any other change. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mufasa. <laughs> like, like that. That's the only change you make. Um, and I like, can't remember who was Timon. Okay. like Seth. When I Rogan was, was one of them. To probably Pumba. I can't. Yeah. Either way, those two were good. I, can't I mean, remember Seth Rogan is the guy I I associate with like horrible <laughs> fat things. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So so um. But no, I, I when I saw that John Oliver was doing the voice for Zazu, I'm like, holy shit, that's so perfect. Did he also somehow do the original Zazu's voice? That's what I said. Like you can. He's the one. The most overall, other than obviously um. Uh, Mufasa, because it's the same person he came back for. James it. Earl Jones? James Earl Jones, yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, that would be the only reason I'd watch it then. Yeah, that's pretty much why that, and I found it streaming for free, so. Well, there you go. There um, you go. But, it, like, the, like, Zazu's the most perfect to where now, I can't even think of the original voice for Zazu. Yeah. Um, um, it, but it's not, everyone it wasn't else, him. It wasn't him. Everyone else is just a new, it's like. Okay, that's Not cool. even, like, none of them are that impressive. They did good. Right. Nobody's bad except for Scar. Scar's boring. Scar's lame. Don't know why they did it. He's not good. The Jer- uh, Jeremy Irons, I think, did Scar originally. Uh, um, I, that's actually what I'm looking up right um, now. Because was I, amazing. I, that, that, was the, that was the voice that came to mind was Jeremy Irons. And there are, like, moments where he starts to do a Jeremy Irons almost performance. Yeah. A, a good, like, bad guy. Yes, you are correct. It was Jeremy and then Irons. They, and then they cut it off. And yeah. he doesn't, and it's he's he's legitimately not good. It's like the that's the part of that's the one thing that's like bad about it. Otherwise, it's why do we need it? Mm-hmm. This didn't. Other than John Oliver Zazu, which they could go and re-record the original, and I'm fine <laughs> <laughs> because yes, this is what I need. No, no, but seriously, you, Disney. I want someone to make that change. I want somebody to take that fucking movie and digitally so impose record. John Oliver's head. I think you do that with everyone. I'm fine with that. Just especially him, but you could do it with all of them. Especially a human sized head on uh, Timon. <laughs> <laughs> him and the bird. Yeah, okay. I, I'd be completely fine with that. I would watch that movie. Like, the scene, and I think it's one of the, the best scenes, and it's the sh- sh- schlockiest humor, is when um they're talking about needing a distraction. Yeah. And I can't even remember the line that they say. Like, what oh, do you want us to go the, the, in front of them do the hula or something like that? Uh, and, and they just turn and they look at Timon and Pumbaa, or they look at Pumbaa, and... That's not, it's like, it's just lions looking at a pig. It's not 
it's it's not it's not as funny. It's like kind of funny. Yeah. I can see where the joke is, but the original it's legit funny. And in this, it's kind of like oh, it happened. Yeah. Ah, uh, they did the thing. Ah, uh, that's cool. It's it's eh, yeah yeah. Um, but either way, that's why I don't. I, a Lady and the Tramp. Okay, a movie about dogs. It's dogs. All right. I like doggos. I but no. Why? Why do I care? Um. But well, there are things we do care about. Yes. Um, and there's a, like a lot. Um, Black Panther 2 getting a release date mm-hmm. in, on May 6, 2022. I hate time. that it's so far away. But at the same time, you know, they're going to do right by it because they're getting Ryan Coogler back to direct it. Uh, and it's, um, I think like, I think we were right when we mentioned, was it me and you? We were talking about Phase 4 seeming kind of almost... Because this whole year they've shown all these movies, yeah, almost seemed like there wasn't much to it, right? Uh, I think the reason they announced this release date, other than the fact that it's one of the movies that I think people are most, I mean, want you know, want to know, hey, when the fuck are we getting Black yeah, Panther too? I especially me because I yeah. fucking love the original Black Panther. Um, I think that I think that movie is going to be a part of Phase Four, and Phase Four is going to be uh, like long, yeah, like this section. It's not going to be a one year thing. This is going to be a long. A this, lot of movies. It's definitely going to be a multi-year. Yeah, thing going all the way into possibly 2022. If that if that isn't a part of it, but I think it will be. I think so too. Yeah. Uh, and they're adding Namor. King, was it Namor, King of the Sea? I think this title in Marvel. Um, I I don't know. Everybody I, everybody I talk to about this yes is like I'm like hey they're adding Namor to that and they're like who the fuck is who Namor? the fuck is Namor and I'm like you don't dude and speedo fucking wings on his feet. Comes out of the ocean, pisses everyone in Marvel off. He sounds Nobody. like uh, oh, who was the the idiot that flew too close to the sun? Uh, 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 oh my Hermes. Gosh. Yeah, he sounds so like wait, Hermes. Is it Hermes? I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, he's got because he has the same winged feet as Hermes. Hermes was the messenger. I think you're thinking Icarus. of Icarus. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hermes had the winged feet. Okay. Um, but yeah, he he's. Super, he's like on a strength level of Thor. Um, he's legit. He's one of like the most powerful Marvel characters. He's got all the powers of Aquaman. And it just sounds so stupid. Well, no, like I showed someone, I was like, "Oh, if you think he sounds stupid, here's what he originally looked like." And he's literally just a dude in a speedo with like this, like lawyer. I, I the best case, the best way I could describe it is like a lawyer's haircut because his hair is just like trimmed back. And he's got fucking wings on his feet, and it's a green scaly speedo. And he's got no shirt. He's just a fucking, like, he looks like uh, just a fucking dude in a speedo. <laughs> Namor the Submariner. The Submariner, yeah. Um. <laughs> and he's he used to be, back in the day, Marvel's big people were Iron Man, Captain America, Namor, um, Thor, and, like, I think Hulk? This is a long time ago, back before Iron Man fell out of favor completely. When they rebooted Iron Man, Iron Man was like a C-list hero, which is Namor now is like CD level. I mean, but nobody okay. knows who he is. I've only heard of him because I've watched other things where they talk about him. I've seen him in a few things, but he's not—he's not a character many people know about. Yeah, no, like, but I want to see him done. I want to see him done well. It's like the Guardians. When they said they announced the Guardians of the Galaxy, everyone's like, what the fuck is the Guardians of the Galaxy? I, okay, so I'm looking at Namor the Submariner on Google Images, and one of the first images I found was the one you talked about, where he's got wings on his feet and a fucking Speedo, mm-hmm. and he's got his little bracelets. I have to be honest with you, mm-hmm. this particular image, he looks more like a villain than he does a hero. He's not always a hero. Yeah. In fact, um, if they do the story where him and... and um, um, Black Panther, they they're meeting. Most likely, they're not going to be friends. They're going to be fighting each other um, because he's very like. Sometimes Aquaman shows up and is like, "Get your trash out of the fucking ocean, or I'm killing all the humans." Like that's Namor's shtick. Is uh, I think at one point he comes out of the ocean and like causes a tidal wave that just covers half of the world's beaches in nothing but garbage. And he's like, here's your trash back. And then he goes back into the ocean, like completely environmentally destroying the beaches because fuck you, you're hurting the ocean. I mean, that's actually pretty badass, I have yeah. to say. Like, no, no, I can't. It's hard to fault the guy. 
Like, I completely fucking understand where you're coming from, dude. Yeah, so he's not, he's definitely not always a hero, but, uh, yeah, he caught, he controls, uh, underwater creatures, can do weird shit with water. I, I, I want to see him fight fucking, uh, Black Panther. I think it'd be badass. Um, and then, of course, because it's a Marvel movie, we know there's probably going to be another threat that they'll end up teaming up against. But who, since it's in 2022, there's no telling how long, you know, what, what we could get by then. Right. And I have no idea who Namor's villains are. <laughs> I didn't even know who the fuck he was. Exactly. You know, like, I, I, I can't. I can't. What? <laughs> Namor the Submariner. What Namor is this shit? Namor the Submariner. Like... There, I, I know they used to have an old cartoon of him in like the sixties. He's, he's been an Avenger. Um. So, all right, Disney Plus. Yes, Disney Plus is the big thing. Are we also that they announced stuff for? Are we also getting old Marvel cartoons on there? I don't know because that would be amazing. Like I want to go back and bad, watch. Though. <laughs> Love That's why it's amazing. I, I would watch the old Spider Man stuff. Yeah, I was gonna say I want to go back watch the old Spider Man stuff. And maybe watch that episode, uh, watch those shows, like the old Iron Man show, because I, I distinctly remember an Iron Man show. There was, yeah, they, there was one in the 90s. Uh, like, there was an Iron Man, a Hulk, um, obviously Spider-Man. Uh, there there was a, quite a few along the side, the X-Men. I'd watch, I'd watch, definitely watch some of those. I hope so, because I've been now getting kind of tempted to get um, DC Universe, although I'm at the same time still hesitant, because it, I thought it was going to be shut down or turn into something different after they got bought by AT&T. Um, either way, like, they have all their old cartoons on there. Like, you can watch Batman Beyond in HD. Right, which would be pretty cool. Apparently, uh, this is something I'm just now finding out about because I'm just now mm-hmm. searching for Namor. Apparently, there was a fan campaign to make Donnie Yen uh, play the Mariner. Like, mm-hmm. to get Don- – like, hey, have him play that. So, it's very, very – in um, the In the live action – movie that's rumored that they're creating yeah i mean i'm fine with that there's the, i mean absolutely fucking dude it's, just, it's donnie yen and yeah literally anything he wants to do he'd do whatever he, shit dude he could he could play steve and blues clues i'd be fucking like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> blues clues movie um i would watch that i i would just to see donnie yen doing like talking to a cartoon dog. I don't know why I find that an interesting. I find that idea intriguing. Yeah. Um, it's very. It, have him play Dora the Explorer. I don't know, I'm, yeah, fuck it. I, I, there was at some point. Swiper, I saw no something. swiping, and then he gets the shit kicked out of him. You know. Like, uh, what's the the guy's name who plays Machete? Uh, I saw something where he was like an SNL or oh, um, Mad TV um, sketch. Oh, oh where, God, yes. Uh, uh, why can't I think of his name? Why can't I think of his name? It's like right there on the tip of my tongue. Why do I want to say oh, Romero? It's no, it's not Romero. <laughs> it, uh, no. Um, oh my! Oh, I just had it in my head, and then it went away. <laughs> yeah, um, he was playing Dora. In something I saw. Oh my god! Uh, but um, um, fuck. You looked that up, so I had to. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Oh my god! Here it is. All right, uh, Danny Trejo. Trejo. Why? Yeah. Why did that escape me? <laughs> Why is Steven Seagal in this movie? Fuck you. <laughs> I, I, D- Danny Trejo can play. I like. I'd still like to see him play. But so, what I was gonna say though. Is like it's it's beyond rumor. It, it's like nothingness, but it, like it, it, the, the fucking if there was a perfect world. So they announced the Namor thing. Um, they're working on getting someone to play Namor. Nobody's been announced yet. At the same time, um, was around the time that that uh, Keanu Reeves said, "Yeah, I'd love to play a Marvel hero." Uh, and apparently, they were in talks. Like Marvel and Keanu Reeves had allegedly been talking. So everyone immediately was like, oh, maybe Keanu Reeves play Namor? <laughs> Namor, please? <laughs> Which, okay, fine. I don't care. I'd love just put Keanu Reeves in a Marvel movie. All right, so Keanu Reeves, uh, the Marvel character that he needs to play is Keanu Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to play, no, he needs to play like John Wick. And the, he needs to play John Wick meets the Punisher, and they team up. John and it's Wick, the greatest thing ever. John Wick, he just needs to play John Wick and everything. Yeah. Or, uh, what was another good, didn't he play Constantine? Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't a great movie, but he was good in it. it but the, the thing was, it was essentially, he was Neo. Yeah. Like, because he's not, he's, he's a good actor, but he kind of 
plays the same thing. Yeah, he, like, like he he's a great guy. Yeah, he's a good actor. Um, but when he does, you, he's he, used properly, he's amazing. Yeah, like he, and, and he in plays, Constantine, he plays kinda. a stoic, kind of low emotion, quiet guy. Every man, amazingly well. Like, that, that is, I I actually that is I, his thing. Part of it probably is because I never read the Constantine comics. I really I like that movie. Uh, I know people that were really fans of the comics were disappointed in it, but I yeah, thought it was great. Fuck them. All right. So, so any other stuff they've got? Uh, um, the big Marvel shows. Uh, she Hulk, Miss Marvel, and Moon Knight. Moon Knight, yeah, which is the big one for me because I wanted to see. I one thing Marvel does not has not done in their movies, and we only got to see with the Netflix stuff. Um, street level heroes, mm-hmm. and even in the Netflix stuff, Daredevil did a little bit, but for the most part, they all had too much. Like not too much because they were enjoyable, but they had lots of plot. We didn't yeah. get to see them really being street level heroes very much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because they were always exploring. There's or always a bigger, some, some, yeah, some bigger big thing to take care conspiracy of. Fisk, or yeah. with Jessica Jones, she's you know always investigating some random stuff, um, and like not wanting to actually be a hero. Same thing with uh, um, Luke Cage. Luke Cage. Yeah, yeah. He, he just gets drawn in the shit. Yeah, yeah. And I want Moon Knight is like it's he's pretty much like Marvel's Batman. Yeah. Um, like Dark Knight Returns style Batman, where he will fucking fuck you up, break you, and then carve a crescent moon into your forehead, so everyone knows Moon Knight beats your ass for being a naughty, <laughs> naughty person. Which I dig. Yeah, he's a very, very fucking violent character who I think has some powers. He's like got the it, Moon Knight's got a crazy backstory, multiple personality disorder. <laughs> There's uh, he's possessed by I think some god of vengeance no. uh, and justice that feeds off of his like causing pain in criminals Uh so like there's there's lots of stuff who knows what they're gonna do with the show yeah um but he's he's a fucking cool character i i'd like to see more of it just because it's more marvel give me give me more good marvel stuff um and i swear to god i cannot wait for she hulk if it is like a like take like an abc cbs courtroom drama tv show Yes, and it's she, that's she's a lawyer. Yeah, I was and say, then have She Hulk there, like think, as the prosecutor or defendant like Phoenix or whatever. Wright, but was She Hulk? Yes. Yeah, it's like because they did a little bit of that in, in Daredevil. Yeah, yeah. I want to see She Hulk. I want to see that courtroom drama, see, but with an eight and a half or nine foot tall woman who's green with like <laughs> just bulging muscles. Yeah, awesome, ridiculously like, muscular. Oh, I was like, over, I was like, you don't even need a backstory. Just start it at that. Start it, yeah, start it with her in a fucking courtroom. Make the opening <laughs> pilot episode her dun, 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 making a case. Like Law and Order style. Yes. Yes. Oh, man. Oh, my. Yeah, that would be amazing. I, I would be completely on board <laughs> It'd be so dumb. It's so great. Oh, I, I don't know what I don't know what you do with She-Hulk. I've never, like, I, that's what I know about her is, you know, she does courtroom stuff. She's, she's a badass. Avenger. She's a badass lawyer. She's gotten, she, yeah, she's. Uh, she's as strong as the Hulk. Currently, kind of, because yeah. like, she got a super upgrade recently. Yeah. But normally, not quite as strong as Hulk. Yeah. Because she can control it. She doesn't have the anger issues. Yeah. She's unfortunately permanent. I think permanently changed into the Hulk form. Which so she goes about her daily life. She's a lawyer. She does her job. <laughs> which is fucking awesome to me. And then I'm sure nobody, you know, fucking fucks with her because no, she why can would you? pick up a goddamn bus and throw it a mile because she's not as strong as the Hulk, but she's almost as strong as the Hulk. Um, you and McGregor is uh, going to be Obi Wan again. Yep, Obi Wan's coming back. Um, a full series. Not really any details on where, when, what it's going to be about, other than it's fucking Obi Wan. Yeah, we're getting like a full series. Uh, Say Instead what you, of the movie. Yeah, say what you want about the prequels. Uh, Ewan McGregor was a great part of the prequels. He was the best part and the only one that even with the terrible writing and dialogue that he was given um, still, like, made it not suck. Yeah. He he, he was the I best mean, part of those movies, I, my, I, in, at least to me. I, I, I enjoyed, at least in a moderate, to a moderate degree. Um, well, what the hell is his name? Liam Neeson? 
as yeah, he was good too. Jin, uh, that that was that was fine. There's a uh, lot of other. There's a lot of good people to me. Samuel L. Jackson. Hugh McGregor as, stands um, out. Oh, uh, Mace Windu. Yeah, you just. I had it. I was just about to say it, and then you said a name right as yeah. I said, it, and I was like, "Why?" <laughs> so yeah, uh, just same thing with Danny Trejo thing. It just went yeah. out the window and flew away, and, and now it's I don't know gone. What it was. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like like they made those they made those movies tolerable, um, I, and I'm not even gonna sit there and, and shit on Hayden Christensen because he was just given such shit material to work yeah, with. Yeah, I just I he think was he fine. was a mediocre mediocre actor who was given something that's not. I mean lines that just could not be worked. Yeah, he was a just he was an okay actor, and in my opinion, that's the Jedi who are evil. Like, what the fuck? What does that even mean? Like, I get where you're coming from. Yeah. I, I understand what the emotion in that scene was supposed to be. But it's bad. Uh, like, and I wouldn't even say his delivery was bad. It was just... No, it's, it It really is a lot of it boils like down the to the Like, the content writing. was just, like... It's why if he's some... For, if he's... This is why George Lucas should not have been allowed to do it. Uh, Someone should have stepped everything. in and smacked him with, like, you know, one of those giant paddles that you get nope. pizzas out of the ovens <laughs> with. Just, no, bad. Bad, you know, like, uh, or, a human or at least proofread and like told him, hey, let's not do everything CGI. Is George Lucas married? I know we have the, I think so. All right. Why didn't his wife step in? Yeah, she's not, a, you know, she's like, probably like, not look, a movie person. You look at like George Romero, uh, some of the movies, some of the best movies he's made. He's credited his wife <laughs> with oh. editing the movie, like, like proofreading the movie. Like you said, mm. he's made, she's made it better. It's like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah. So right. it's like, well. Oh. Why? Why There's could, a lot. When they were made, George Lucas George, could do no wrong. So. Mrs. Lucas, we all blame you for this. <laughs> I don't know. He might not even be married. I don't, dude. I don't remember. He's got money. I don't really care. Something. He's some billions worth. Um, I don't know. Anyway, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm excited for it because we've we talked about before that when they started doing the Star Wars stories that everyone's like, yeah, they're probably going to do Obi-Wan. That's the big rumor is that Obi-Wan and um, Boba Fett are going to get their own movies. And then there was a rumor of Yoda and, uh, you know, a Vader spinoff and all this. And then, well, you fucked one of your core movies so bad that no one went and saw your next standalone movie. And it bombed so hard that you had to take a step back and go, maybe we won't do these standalone movies anymore. So, I mean, so I'm, speaking I'm fine of which, though, um, Mandalorian got a trailer here. It, I forgot to look that up. It, I forgot to watch that. It's actually very similar to the last trailer. I don't know if you watched I it. I never watched any of the trailers. Like I oh, said, okay, I've, been, yeah. I've been consumed. Well, that, yeah, it came out single way, way earlier. Bullshit. But I, it looks cool. It's a fucking Mandal. It's like a it's a bounty hunter. It's Star Wars. Under the underground stuff of Star Wars after the fall of the rebel uh, of the fall of the Empire, mm -hmm. and I mean it. It looks it's not Boba Fett, but it is a Mandalorian bounty hunter. So he's got very similar armor. He's got a lot of the similar weapons. Right. He's got the fucking um, the the retractable whip thing in the gauntlet. I think he's got a, a missile launcher in the gauntlet. They said like he's got. All the fucking, a lot of weapons similar to Boba Fett. Right, right. And he's going around collecting bounties in a time when, um, because the new the new republic is forming, there's no really no government right now. Right, right. Um, the, the, there's not a lot of work for bounty hunters. So he's having to take, you know, really f dangerous jobs wherever he can get them. And I, I don't know, so far it looks cool. It, it definitely, the trailer got me hyped. Taika Waititi directed an episode which is like, okay, fuck it. Awesome. Inject some of his uh, QE humor into things. I'm always down for that. Um, the showrunner is, um, I, I, I swear to God, it's the guy who did uh, John Favreau, uh, directed uh, Iron Man. Oh, and yeah, Lion yeah, King. yeah. And is happy. And is happy. Yeah, he, he is happy. One of my favorite characters. Oh, yeah, dude. He, he played such a great happy. Don't go away happy if he goes back to, to, to Sony. No. no. I hope Happy's not one of those Marvel-only characters. <laughs> oh, that would be terrible. Because um, he's the last father figure Peter has. I really hope they are able to work some shit out, man. I hope they do, too. Like, Nothing's I, been worked out yet. And, like, you hear one voice from Sony where Sony's like, oh, well, I mean, you know, it's not guaranteed we can't work something out we'll see what happens blah 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 and then both tom holland and um 
somebody else are like, yeah, we had a good run. We'll see, you know, we'll, you know, whatever the future holds for us, Tom Holland's still going to be Spider-Man in these movies. And then now he's saying like, oh, these Sony movies are going to be very different. Like, motherfucker, stop giving up. We want you back in the MCU. We don't, you're too important. You just got handed like the keys to the fucking kingdom. You're Iron Man now, motherfucker. You're Come basically back. Iron Man. You're oh god, fucking god damn it. Anyway, yeah, um, yeah. There's uh, the Mandalorian looks awesome. There was a uh, trailer for fucking episode nine. Oh uh, yeah, which uh, a newer trailer. We should say, yes, there's, there's been a couple already and released. And trailer, it more like it's more like a, random scenes. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, more like it's a, more like, like a compilation teaser. I can't. It's, one of my friends called it what it actually is, and I can't remember what he said. But yeah, it's not really a trailer. The first. Like two minutes or minute and a half is all scenes from the older Star Wars movies. Yeah. So this is 100% J.J. Abrams. This is 100%. Oh, yeah. I know what I need. I know what I must do. Mm. Endless fan service. Just dumping the fan service into this as much as possible. So like, what, what do you want to see, Star Wars? This is gonna be in the movie. Like, we're gonna give you everything you want from Star Wars. I mean, I gotta say, like, like. Seeing that trailer when you mentioned it earlier today, and I'm like, yeah. hey, you got to go see that. I'm like, all right, if I don't want to, because fucking episode yeah, I mean, eight was so awful. I don't know how much I care about Star Wars. Mm-hmm. But then it was, of course, now on stage. Everyone was thinking about, like, all right, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. And then, you know, I did see the trailer where Ray jumps over the fucking, uh, whatever, the speeder or whatever. Oh, yeah, the first, the first actual, like, really cinematic trailer. Right, the first real good. trailer. And then yeah. it's like, all right, maybe. Yeah, this, this is this is more this is this is maybe leading towards yes, right? Yeah. Like it's still in that still in that middle ground maybe area, but it's leaning more towards yes. Um and then I saw this trailer and she flips the fucking dual lightsabers. Yeah, the I'm end like, of it where it's like dark ray. I'm like, okay. All right. I, I, I might okay, I'm gonna go see this. I immediately this is the this to me is like the speculation footage, this yeah, is too. Yeah. This it's to fuck was with people and build that hype. Yeah, yeah, this was handpicked to get all of the Star Wars fans, all of the people who are like, you know, will go through and Nitpick every scene every and want to figure out everything. Detail. And I yeah. will one of those people that will sit there and watch their analysis. That is what this was for. And all of the theory crafting, and I can't help it. Like for the last like week at work. Literally, me and like my manager and uh, my other manager. All we, every time we walk past each other, we're talking about a new theory or a new like yeah, idea. Yeah. Or did you see this little bit of the trailer? Like, did you notice that uh, her right hand was? Oh, she's wearing out. a ring that's yeah. like the ring that from this. Yeah, and, and, yeah. Uh, Oh, I mean, what if Sidious? You know, he they clones are a thing. What if she's a clone? Maybe that's her backstory. Maybe that's why she doesn't have parents that are important. She's a clone. What if she's a clone of Sidious and Skywalker? Walker's blood. Maybe that's why it's Rise of Skywalker. Maybe yeah. she's. I mean, that's that's all we've been doing for like the last week, and it's it it makes me happy. I love that. So yes. it's like JJ, you you bastard, you did exactly what you. He knows what he's doing. He knows exactly what he needed to do, and um, you know what? God bless JJ. Yeah. Seriously, man. Well, I mean, I, I'm hoping he pulls it out because one thing he doesn't know do is close out a, a a close out a story very well. Yeah, lost fans will tell you how how disappointed they were in the ending of that, um, and Star I, Trek fans will tell you what the fuck happened to my series. But what he's doing with Star Wars, I, to me, I, and I get there's a lot there's people who don't like the fan service. Right. That's I mean, I that's get, what Star yeah, Wars I, is to me. Yeah, I get that. Too, is like. Star Wars should be the epic scenes we want to see? Like it, it, that's perfect. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I don't want to see a complete retread mm-hmm. of um, any of the like first three movies, but I still don't see The Force Awakens as a whole retread. It still yeah. had enough of its own story. There's those beats. There's basically a Death Star. There's basically a trench run. Yeah, like like. like but I was, it was still different enough that I enjoyed the hell out of it. Yeah, I mean, I still, I can still, I, I went back and watched Episode Seven uh, recently, and was like, this is still okay. I think this that, is still fine. Like, I still enjoyed this feeling. Yeah. You know, like. Like, yeah, I get where people are coming from because there are a lot of similarities. Mm. And they did that on purpose. And I'll say, yeah, 100% because I think you had to bring back that nostalgia Mm. because we'd been away from Star Wars so long. And the last thing we had were the prequels, which, again, he's doing that again with this movie. And maybe even more so because the last taste in our mouth. And J.J. Abrams, I think, is one of those people that understands eight was not good. 
eight and when the fans good. they say they didn't like eight it's not because they didn't like the asian girl or the pink haired lady it's because it was a badly written movie yeah it's not like it's not i'm not sitting it's there it's not because every fan is sexist and racist no, there are not. those who are like that absolutely but no it's because I, it was a bad movie. When I, yeah, when I sit here and I say that movie was fucking terrible, it's not because there was a woman in it who was the lead. There's not because it was being it was this, that, or the other. It's not because of that. It's because there it was, was a never, terrible Star Wars movie. It was it was a terrible movie. Yeah, like there there's no reasons for us to rally behind these people. You don't give us a reason. Mm-hmm. You shoehorn in pointless aspects like the whole going down to the rich planet scene, you shoehorn in a love story that had zero buildup, made no fucking sense. You know, it's like you, you kill off a character where the actor is still alive, but keep the character where the actress died. Why? Yeah. Why are you doing this? There's so many mistakes that were made in that movie. Just that I think he understands. And I'm not saying he's like, Oh, he's one of us. No, not by me. Not by a long shot. But he understands where, I like where the yeah, ire is coming the, from. The yeah, problem like, because if they if there's people at Disney who still deny it, you just have to look at Solo and see how poorly that movie did because the fans said we're not going to watch your movie anymore. You still don't understand why that movie, why we didn't like that movie. Yeah, um, which I heard Solo was all right. It is. It, yeah. it, it it's definitely worth more than the money it made, and I think that's why because a lot of the core fans didn't go see it. Mm-hmm. And I'm one of them. I never saw that movie until it was on fucking Netflix. Which, you know, I, I was thinking about watching it a couple nights ago and I decided mm-hmm. against it because I wanted to go to bed. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm I chose sleep over Star Wars. I don't like like I like the the, the thing at the end where they show Ray with a fold out double lightsaber. Yeah. Um I straight up they like I, I don't think in any way, shape, or form that Ray is gonna fall to the dark side and that's what that shows right. unless there's some mind control stuff going on. Right. But I think that it's either going to be a clone or like a fucking dark link situation or for something else. But the fact that they showed it in the trailer is the thing that makes me most. Yeah. Other than the fact that they didn't have any buildup and she's already had her. I fought the dark side moment with, um, what's his name? Uh, when he offered, like when he's oh, like, join yeah. me and we'll take over the galaxy. And she's like, uh, no, let's go be good. <laughs> and he's like, nah, fuck that. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. I'm going to go. I'm going to go fuck shit up. Yeah. I'm already a boss. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, um, man. I'm, I don't know what else I, I would really care to talk about. I still uh, opening of that movie needs to be Luke Skywalker reforming and going, wow, wouldn't it have been really fucking stupid if I died? <laughs> like how stupid would that like him literally looking <laughs> into this? Sp- Look in the camera and wink. <laughs> how terrible would that be? But I'd still love it. I mean, oh man. I don't I, know. I, I, he's in the movie. Mark Hamill is a force ghost. Come back to life. I, either way. Uh, he should not have died. No, I'm, but, but whatever. All right, guys, that's, that's it for us. I, I'm, I've run out of steam. <laughs> Uh, go, um, giving her all she got. She can't take no more. Yeah, what he said. Um, remember, like, share, subscribe, comment. Tell us what we did wrong. Tell us what we did right. Uh, <laughs> give us money if you are so inclined. If you want to go to our Patreon. Yeah. Join our Discord. Discord. Yeah, we, we we don't chat in there often, but we do sometimes, you know. <laughs> Like, I'm just, I don't feel social as much these days. So I just, whatever. I feel but, um, yeah, you know. We respond. We do. Absolutely, yeah. Um, And, you know, we joke. We have fun. We post memes. Go there. Enjoy. Follow us on Twitter. That's where you can stay on top of our announcements. When we decide that uh, we we don't feel well enough to do an episode, we usually announce it on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Um, And, of course, our Patreon page has all sorts of stuff. You know, you get early access to the videos. You get behind-the-scenes clips. And you, well, not even clips. Like, we just drop, like, 15 20 minute videos of us sitting here bullshitting outside of the podcast so if you're interested in seeing that you know go give us go give us a few bucks get some stuff back in return get some special perks on our discord and an internal spot on our credits page and like i said maybe we'll make fun of you but uh for the ungodly geeks i was joe i was luke you guys have a good day see ya fuck star wars episode eight